Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for watching. Ubiquity has recently released firmware version 3.0.20 to the UDM Pro and UDM base models. By the way, by the time of this recording it's still in release candidate. Hopefully by the time you're watching this it will already, already be generally available. We are starting to see leveling out of features across all Unify gateways. But what we are going to talk about specifically in this video is something that I know has been long awaited by the UDM Pro and UDM base users, users and that's WireGuard VPN. This VPN is so easy to configure, so easy to connect to, it's such a breeze. By the way, if you're using WireGuard VPN or the old L2TP VPN, same security concepts still apply. Firewall rules are your friend. We're going to talk about everything and we'll see how to configure the WireGuard VPN. So let's go over to the computer, join me. All right guys, so we're at the computer and let's start configuring stuff so you'll see how easy it is to configure and to connect to. I'm already logged in to my UDM base device that I have deployed and I've gotten permission to demo on. So let's go right ahead and go into settings. Let's go into teleport and VPN. VPN server, click on create new. Obviously we're working with, with WireGuard. Let's give this VPN a name, let's call it WireGuard. Now the private key and public key, of course you shouldn't expose them or share them. Uh, you don't need to worry about them specifically in our case because we're using a, v a, a Windows VPN client that will we will uh, download a configuration file that will include all the necessary information, uh, information so don't worry about that. We do need to mention a, a port Although you don't need to do any port forwarding in uh, operating systems that are not like Windows, like CLI based Linux uh, environments, you might need uh, to manually build the tunnel. But for us, luckily, we don't need to deal with this. A few more things that I want to customize. Let's go into advanced and manual. I do want to change the subnet for my VPN clients from, from 192.168.2.1. I'm going to change this to 55. This is just my, in my specific case, what works for me. You can, of course, decide otherwise. One more thing that you can, although not mandatory, is change the DNS servers. For example, if you're uh, VPNing in to an environment that's, for example, an Active Directory environment, you might want to change the uh, DNS servers into your domain controller's IP addresses, for example. For now, we can just use Google's DNS server and of course we need to uh, add a client so click on add new client I'm going to change this to manual I'm going to give it a name for example win11 and I'm going to create this user and as I said before, we, we need to download a configuration file that we will upload into our WireGuard client. Let's uh, go ahead and click on the client we've created and click on download profile. Now, at this point, you can click on create user and apply changes. And now you need to take the file that you've just downloaded and, and in any way you, you see fit, transfer this file onto the computer you want to connect to your WireGuard VPN. I'm going to use, just for the demonstration purposes, the easiest way for me is to use Google Drive. You can use whatever method you see fit. All right, so here I am on my client computer, which is located, of course, somewhere geographically different than my UDM-based device. I've already downloaded the configuration file that I've uploaded to my Google Drive. And the next thing you need to do on your client device is open up your favorite uh, browser and your favorite search provider and search for WireGuard. First result will take you to this WireGuard website. Click on installation and download the Windows installer. Of course, we're using a Windows client in this case. I've already downloaded the Windows client. All right, here's the installer. I'll just double click on it, click on yes, 
that's it. WireGuard is installed. The, the next thing that we all we have to do, all we have left to do, sorry, is to import our configuration file. And here's our file. And as you can see, all the necessary information and configurations have already been imported with this configuration file. And once I click activate, by the way, if you remember, if you worked with the old L2TP based VPN, you know that once you click on connect, it takes about 5, 10, maybe 15 minutes, sorry, seconds to get connected. With WireGuard, it will take a second or two. Let's try. Here it is. It, it took, I think, less than a second. We're already connected. In fact, let's go ahead, bring out a command prompt and let's try to ping an access point I have deployed on that location. And indeed we get a reply and just so that we can see that I'm connecting from this subnet 99.78 that's my IP address. Once I got connected to my WireGuard client, I got this IP address, which is exactly the one I defined. So everything looks like is in order, and that's how easy it is to configure and connect to WireGuard. It's absolutely amazing. Now, that part is almost a no-brainer. The part that you need to, to invest some brain power into is security, and I'm talking about a firewall and firewall rules. Now, I want to, I, I will add a link in the top right corner to a video I created about generally my method of creating uni, uh, firewall rules in Unify. I'm glad to say that I've gotten a lot of positive comments and I know for a fact that this method has, has been adopted by several other YouTube uh, tech creators. So thank you everyone. And I recommend that you watch this video. So I'm going to touch on it just briefly uh, on how I recommend doing firewall rules. Uh, let's go back to my UDM based device. And the first thing that you should do if you watched the, uh, my firewall rules video, the first rule is to create a, a rule that will block all internal traffic, everything. And this rule will create a starting point that, that resembles any other firewall uh, vendors out there, PFSense, uh, uh, FortiGates, Palo Altos. Nothing is allowed until you go in and define rules for the traffic that you want to allow. I don't know why Unify is not taking this route. Maybe it's to be more uh, uh, home user friendly. But just before we'll create the firewall rule, I want you to go into profiles and create a group, I, I called it RFC 1918, and take note of the subnets that you need to define in this group. These are all the internal subnets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this group in the firewall rule. So let's go back to firewall and security, LAN, create new rule, LAN in, I'm going to call it block inter, VLAN routing, I'm going to drop RFC 1918 is the source and also the destination. Click on apply changes. Great, this rule is created. Now, this is only the starting point. This will only take care of blocking all interne internal traffic. Now what we want to do is we want to define what do we want to allow VPN clients to access once they're connected? I'm assuming that you don't want VPN clients to automatically gain access to all of the VLANs and all of your networks. So in my case, I have two networks, the uh, 10.31.80 and the 10.31.99. And this is the, the uh, network that I want to allow in this example, VPN clients to gain access to. So again, I'm going to go into profiles, into groups, and I created two groups that I'm going to use. One is WireGuard clients, and this will include the subnet I defined 
in the WireGuard VPN. And the other group is VPN allowed subnets. And this will include all the subnets that you want to allow your VPN clients to connect to. Now all we have to do is to go back into firewall and security and create a new rule, LAN in, and let's call it VPN to 99 net. I'm going to use the action accept. For the group, I'm going to select WireGuard clients and the destination is the VPN allowed subnets. Click on apply, go to the LAN tab and make sure this rule goes above the block interfill and routing rule because firewall rules are processed from the top to bottom. Another rule we need to create is the opposite of the rule that we've just created. So LAN in 99 net to VPN because traffic needs to be allowed in both ways. So source will be VPN allowed subnets, destination, WireGuard clients. Click on apply, go back to the firewall to the LAN tab, sorry, and make sure this rule goes above the block interval and routing rule. So, if we've configured everything just right, what we'll end up, what we will end up with is VPN clients connecting to our WireGuard VPN and cannot access any resources on the internal LAN, in our example, it's this subnet, but they will be able to access everything on this subnet. Let's give it a try, all right? Let's go back to our client. Let's disconnect. And now let's do an IP config. We can see we only have our internal LAN IP address. Let's again connect to our VPN. Again, that took less than a second. And now let me try to ping the same address I, I tried to ping before and I've gotten ping replies. If I'll scroll up, it's this address. Let's try it again now. Now I am not getting ping reply, but now let me grab an IP address of a client on the 99 subnet and let's try to ping that one. All right, I've got an IP address. Let's try to ping 10.31.99.168 and we do get ping reply. That means that our firewall rules are doing exactly what we ask them to do. I hope guys that you found this video useful and I especially hope you liked my way of doing the firewall rules to protect or to manage traffic once a client's VPN in and in the end screen, the absolute end of this video, I will link to both my Unify Firewall Rules video and another video I created on the old L2TP VPN. But again, in this video, I'm talking about uh, VPN rules, uh, sorry, firewall rules for VPN. Guys, if you like this video, please give it a like. It will help me a lot. Please subscribe and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.